How's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to Isla Reads. Echo made it to the theatre a little after half past one and made her way towards the rehearsal hall she knew Lilith was using. Even before she reached the doors, she could feel the buzz of energy coming from within. As familiar feeling as it was to her, she'd never been one of the ones making it before. A shiver of excitement rushed through her as she telekinetically opened the doors and entered the rehearsal hall. Darling, I'm so glad you could make it. Lilith was at her chair even before she'd fully entered. As usual, almost everyone is here earlier than they thought they would be. We're just waiting on a couple of stragglers now. I see not everyone has been assigned a role they're happy with. Echo eyed up a few actors with scowls on their faces as they stared through their callback scripts. Just because wisps think too much of themselves doesn't mean they don't have talent. They just need to learn talent alone isn't enough when you're just starting out. So, Lilith tilted her head as Lilith pushed her down towards the stage. Am I going to be reading for another part? Yes and no, darling. You were far from the only one auditioning for Chopsa, but of those who did, you're one of the four I've called back for it. Over there is another. She nodded towards a sleek water fairy with long, spiky blue hair. And the other two are just to the left. She nodded towards a female fire pixie and a male garden nymph. I'm just going to get all of you to pair up and read Lance and Chance's Theory of the Letter exchange. The two with the best chemistry will get the parts, and the other two will take up the remaining spots of the crew. Well, assuming you all have chemistry, of course. If the chemistry is absolutely abysmal, I'll just have to come up with something else. But it would be a shame to waste so much talent. So we're going to be doing the Theory of the Letter sequence? Echo buzzed with excitement. Yes, and you will have to pay each part with each of them. I know it's a lot of read-through, darlings. By this time, they'd reach the desk set up just in front of the stage. But I know you can do it. She passed her a copy of the callback script. I hope so. She took several calming breaths in. I know so, darling. I wouldn't have called you back. It. Echo nodded before placing the script on her lap and wheeling herself towards the area the water fairy was reading through his script. Now she was closer to him, she noticed little things about him which implied some imp genes were probably present. For a start, he was taller than most fairies, forded too, with a slight curvature to the ears, but those features only served to enhance his appearance. He was handsome in a way which made Echo's heart flutter and the serious expression he wore as he engrossed himself in his script only served to give him a mysteriously enticing air. Almost as soon as she was within speaking distance of him, the fire pixie and garden nymph bounded over to join them. She's getting us to do the theory of the letter scene, the fire pixie squeaked. Couldn't you just die with excitement? As she spoke, a small burst of fire sparked from her head and shoulders. It was there for less than a second, but it was enough to let Echo know she was dealing with a completely different kind of fire pixie to Cleo. Her clothing was a bagging mixture of pinks and whites, and her short red hair was turned into a bizarre mop-like style with the aid of 20 more small ponytails. I think she wants to see how each of us plan on propelling the chairs. The water fairy tilted his head thoughtfully to one side as his gaze appeared to narrow curiously in on Echo for a moment. I, of course, plan on using these. He indicated towards his wings, which looked like a cross between butterfly wings and a fish's fins. They're not much good for flying, but I've learnt swimming through air is not that much different to swimming through water, if you know what you're doing. Shh, that is so awesome! The fire pixie set off another short burst of flames around her head and shoulders. I can't wait to see it in action. I, on the other hand, am totally going to use kinetic heat just like my hero Sal Flicker Touch did when he played the role. I swear learning how to do that is how I gain control over my flare as a child. You know, Sal once told me that's how he learned to control his own flare ability too. Oh my, like, you've learned Sal Flicker Touch! There was another excited burst of flames around her, this time longer and more impressive than before. Yeah, he and my mama were in a few productions together when I was growing up, including the next heartbeat. Does that mean your mama was actually on stage with one of my heroes in my favourite musical ever? She shivered and wriggled excitedly. And that you actually got to sit in the audience and see it live rather than watch it on DVD over and over and over again like the rest of us? Uh, yeah. Echo gave a nervous laugh. Oh my, like, you are so her whole body erupted with flames for a moment. You are so totally my new best friend. Hey, the garden nymph shot her an almost scolding look. Oh, I'm sorry, Zanny. I didn't mean you can still be my best friend too. She shot him a weak smile. You know you'll always be my oldest and closest and bestest friendly friend ever, right? Yeah, I know, May. I just wish you'd remember a little more often. I'm Echo, by the way. She stretched her hand out towards May. Hi, 
<laughs> Echo, I'm May. The, uh, the pixie grabbed hold of her hand and shook it enthusiastically. And this is Lanny. We've known each other since we were both little kids. I'm probably going to end up in the chorus. Zanny gave an nervous laugh, which caused his fluffy short brown hair to bounce slightly. I only came along to this audition because May was too nervous to come on her own. I'm really not much of a performer. You were good enough to get this call back. Echo flashed of a warm smile. Probably because no one else could keep May under control during our first audition. Hmm. Another nervous laugh came out of him as he scratched the back of his head. She can be a little uh, over-enthusiastic. Lilith doesn't put people through for reasons like that. She knows talent when she sees it. Lilith? May blinked at her. You? No? Miss Triumph? Well, yeah, actually, we go way back. She even gave me my first break when I was a teenager. So is it just backstage kind of stuff you've been doing? What made you decide to actually get up on the stage? Is this the first thing you've auditioned for? Or have you had parts and other things? If this isn't the first thing you've auditioned for, how long ago did you make the switch? Do you still do backstage kind of stuff? Or are you all about performing now? Ah, uh, May, there's absolutely no need to drown her out with questions. Zanya rubbed his eyes. Besides, it's really none of your business. Oh, yeah, you're right. She simmered down a little. It's just, well, this is also exciting and I guess I just can't help myself. We're all excited about this. Echo shot her a sympathetic smile. And I like your enthusiasm. It's very unique. Did you hear that, Zanny? She thinks I'm unique. And what about you? She turned her attention towards the water fairy. Are you as excited about this as the rest of us? Yeah. Mm. He leant forward slightly, his eyes almost transfixed on Echo. I guess you could say I am. I'm Jet, by the way. His gaze finally broke from her in order to flick up towards May. Since all of you were so interested in asking. Uh, sorry. May blinked. I guess we forgot. Sure, it's no big deal, right? It's not like we're supposed to get on or anything. His tone was strangely unreadable, and Echo couldn't tell if he was joking or had been genuinely offended. Actually, in every performance of the next heartbeat, the actors playing members of the crew have gotten along famously. May witted, completely oblivious to either interpretation of his statement. Apparently it helps with the onstage energy or something. I know, he rolled his eyes. I was being sarcastic. Although I have been told by more than a few people, I'm not exactly the best at getting that across. As he finished talking, Jet refocused his gaze on her, making Echo feel more than a little uncomfortable. She was used to people staring at her and had learnt to tell the difference between a friendly, curious stare and one of questioning accusation. His stare was enough to make her squirm in her chair and feel more than a little self-conscious of the fact she was the only disabled actor in the room. But not for the usual reasons. I bet you're going to be better than any of us at the chair ballet. Right, Echo? May's voice broke through the tension as if she were oblivious to it. Uh, Echo stared back at her. I mean, you must be used to propelling yourself around using your powers all the time, right? Actually, I've always found it easier just using my arms. She shot her a weak smile. But I have to admit, I have been using my chair for practice just in case I got the part. She lowered her gaze, almost feeling embarrassed. It's probably heavier than the office chairs Lilith will actually use, but there's no harm getting my streck muscles pumped, right? So you're a streck user then? May clapped her hands together. Well, of course you are. You're a neath, right? What else would you use? Then again, you could have some other random elemental in you, like Fanny does. He can use streck too, which is a good thing, since his gear ability really wouldn't help him much in this situation. <laughs> Sunny, I can't wait to see the pair of you up there auditioning now. She put one arm around Zanny's shoulder whilst the other pointed towards the stage. Two streck elementals chair dancing together. It's going to be so beautiful. I wouldn't count the two of us out so easily, Jack glared at her. Chancellor and Lance are usually paid by people using different elemental skills to move chairs about. If anything, the fact they're both streck users decreases their chances of both getting chosen for those two roles. There's no need to be such a party pooper about it. She, she poked her tongue out at him. I was just trying to be supportive. You should try it sometimes. It can be real fun. Being on stage with the other actors was exhilarating, even if she was just performing the same small excerpt of a scene over and over again. The trouble was, she was too close to the action to know if all four of them gelled as well as she felt they did, or if it was the whole process itself making everything feel as though it just clicked. Still, as much as Echo wanted to play Chancer, she knew without a doubt she would be happy playing any of the members of the crew alongside the others. We're going to the archway! May House sang at her as Echo moved from the office chair she'd been performing on back into her own wheelchair. Do you want to come with? Do they still serve the best chips in town? Yeah, ha, they sure do, she laughed. Then count me in. She grinned up at her. My ex has the kids tonight, and I'd rather not eat alone. You have kids? 
May squeaked a little as she began pushing Echo's chair. How many? How old? What are their names? Why don't you tell me soon you have kids? I love kids. Seriously, growing up, I can never decide what I wanted to do more, become a teacher or an actor. Honestly, I'm still not completely sure I know which one I want to be the most. That's why I studied theatre and performing arts alongside my teacher training. I'm fully qualified now, by the way. But there's just aren't any jobs going right now. And I saw the audition for the next heartbeat and I just totally knew that it had to be like fate or something. And May, take a breath. Vanny appeared almost out of nowhere. Remember what we talked about? I don't need to fit every single thought into one sentence, she giggled. Yeah, you're right, I don't, but trying is just so much fun. So, did you invite Jet? Yeah, although he did take a little persuading. He's waiting for us outside. Yay! May bristled with flames. This is going to be so much fun! The Archway was a pub restaurant close to the theatre district, more famous for its wall of celebrity photos than it was for its chips. Echo had come here a lot with her parents growing up. Both of their photos, along with pictures of her grandparents, hung proudly on its walls. It had always been a dream to one day join them, but writer-directors seldom made it onto the wall, so in reality being a performer was the only sure far away. As they entered the establishment, the group made a beeline for the wall. Can you imagine making it up here one day? May buzz. It would be just amazing! I don't think it bothers me too much one way or the other, Danny shrugged. But then I feel the same about this whole acting thing. I know you said you were only here to support May, but doesn't acting or performing interest you at all? Echo shot him a look. I guess there's something about it, he took it his head thoughtfully, but I've really no idea what I want to do with my life. I've always just gone with the flow a little, which annoys the hell out of my parents, he gave a nervous laugh. They'd both rather I just settle down to a nice steady office job and start a family like my younger brother already. But you're a garden nymph, she half stared at him. Wouldn't they rather you were working with the land or something? My parents are a little more ambitious than your average garden nymph. He rubbed the back of his neck. Even their gardening skills are kind of stuffy when you really look at it. I'm not like them, which frustrates my parents, but I'm also not much like other garden nymphs. Not when you get right down to it. That's okay. I'm not much like your average nymph when you get right down to it either. She shot him a sympathetic smile. So I more than understand what it feels like to be misplaced. Not me. Jet folded his arms and lowered his head slightly. I've always known what I wanted to be, and it's always suited my family just fine. So you've already been in productions before then? Echo studied him for a moment, trying to see if she could picture him in anything she'd seen recently. There's definitely something familiar about him, now she really looked, more in a passing resemblance kind of way, as though he were related to a face she knew rather than being one. No, this is the first production I've auditioned for. Jet's gaze remained focused on the wall in front of them, his expression unreadable. I've been studying. So you're fresh out of school just like we are then. May grinned at him. Great, and now I just feel old. Echo sighed and shook her head. Why? How old are you? She blinked. Twenty-eight. That's not old, Echo, she laughed. And even if it was, you're a neath. Neath almost never show their age. I mean, look at the split pictures they have of Echo Andrews, she pointed. In each different shot, she's at least twenty years older than the previous. But the only way you could really tell is by looking at the quality of the pictures themselves, not to mention the fashion. Seriously, Echo. You could be three or four times our age, and I doubt anyone would notice. But you're not, and seven years is nothing. I don't know if I'd go quite that far, Zenny frowned. Some of us only have an average lifespan of 45 years, you know. For me, seven years is a lot. Uh, sorry, Zanny, I forgot. She shifted her gaze away. But at least you're not an effort, right? They have the shortest life expectancy of all the enchanted breeds. They also age a lot faster too, but then I guess they would have to in order to make the most out of what little time they have. Yeah, because I'm sure that information makes him feel a whole lot better. Jet's voice was as dry and unreadable as his expression. Look, my parents always used to say age doesn't matter. You either have what it takes or you don't. I've heard that somewhere before. Echo found herself frowning, trying to remember. It wouldn't surprise me. Finally, his gaze left the wall and moved towards her. An almost flirty half smile pulled at his lips. It couldn't have been there for more than a moment, but it made Echo's heart race. It didn't matter how attractive she was, being in a wheelchair made her invisible, especially to members of the opposite sex. Just the thought of this young, attractive stranger flirting with her was enough to make her feel noticed. Ah, oh, hey, I just realised you never told me about your kids. Mate sporadically changed the subject as she began pushing Echo towards one of the closest tables. Do you have kids? Jet cocked an eyebrow at her as he and Zanny followed. Yeah, two. She couldn't help but swell with a little pride. Piccolo and Synthesis. Synthesis? May giggled. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? We usually call him Synth. He was named after his grandpatch. On your side are your exes? She wriggled closer. My exes. She pulled her wallet out from her bag. 
I could show you a picture of them if you like. Totally! May leant over in order to stare at the pictures Echo had kept in her wallet. Oh, my light wings! She bristled with flames. They're two-tone asses or acid two-tones. I don't know which way it's supposed to go. Is it the patch of the mermaid's breed which goes first? The patches, Echo smiled. And he's an angelic fairy before you ask. We two kids are going to be young and beautiful forever! I'm not sure I'd go quite that far, but hey, is that Sonata's sweet charm? Jet cut through their conversation as though he knew exactly what that name would mean to Echo. Is it? Doing her best to act nonchalant, Echo picked up one of the menus and pretended to study it as she used it to cover her face. Hey, yeah! May twisted around on her chair so she was unsubtly kneeling on the seat. You know, I think I saw it at the second audition earlier. You did. Danny sounded thoughtful. I think she was with the others who'd been called back for Anita. <laughs> there was a small bristling of fire around her as though it knew she was trying to contain her excitement. She's a lot younger than Lex's was when she played the role. Jet sounded almost bored. And then again, Lex's sweet charm was one of the oldest actors to play the role of Anita. They can get away with playing roles much younger than themselves. May half turned towards him. Oh, weren't you listening to anything I was saying when we were at the wall earlier? You talk so much, I find it easier just to tune you out. Whoa, hey, she's coming over here. Zenny cut off any response May might have given. Oh, my what? May wriggled with excitement. Do you think she'll give autographs if we ask? Before anyone could respond to her question, Echo found the menu she was holding being pushed down, forcing her gaze up. The face she found herself staring at was framed by the same colour auburn hair as Echo's only it was cut into a shorter, more fashionable style. And then there were the eyes. The sharp and intense greenness of them often made Echo wonder how anyone couldn't tell they shared the same gene pool as her own. Echo, her voice was tight and serious. We need to talk. Now. Then talk. She did her best to remain calm. Not here. Sonata's eyes half glanced towards the others. Why, don't you want anyone to hear you warning me to stay away from this production or something? I... I don't want to hear you spouting all his nonsense at me. I really don't, Echo cut off whatever she was about to say. I'm serious about being in this play, just as serious as you were about becoming a soap opera star after he died. Although I still think you're wasting your talent. You belong on the big screen. I can't do films again. A dark expression Echo interrupted as grief spread across Sonata's face. So you're thinking about doing stage instead? Lith asked me to audition for it. Of course she did. Echo couldn't help but roll her eyes. You're a sweet charm. Everyone expects you to be in it. But I love this play just as much as anyone, and I want to be in it too, in whatever way I can. Please don't ruin this for me, Sunny. Don't call me Sunny. Her voice was tight. And, and you don't even know what I want to tell you, so stop putting words into my mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Only he was allowed to do that. Echo, Sunny. I told you not to call me Sunny. My name is Sonata now. Not to me, you're not. You'll always be sunshine to me. You're as bad as Murmur and Patch. We're only bad because we love you. If you loved me, you'd respect my decisions, but you don't. You don't even make the effort to listen to me. It was clear Sonata was getting more than a little agitated now. You all make these big speeches about caring about me, but not one of you shows it. At least I knew where I stood with him. At least I could count on him to listen when it mattered. But you know what, Echo? Have it your way. If you don't want to listen to me, then fine. I'm leaving. Sunny, Echo called after her, making her stop for a moment. I really don't want things to be like this between us. Then stop believing the worst in me, she glared. Come, talk to me. Now. I, for a moment, Echo hesitated, her eyes glancing towards the others, then back towards her sister. Fine, have it your way. Keep putting words into my mouth. Just don't come running to me when, she shook her head. What's the point? It's not like you're going to believe me anyway. And here I was trying to be a good sister to you. But in order to do that, I would have to have a good sister first. With that, she stormed off. As the door to the archway swung open, Echo was certain she spotted Twigs stood just outside. It was only a brief glimpse, though. The door was closed again too quickly for anything more than that, but it was still enough to make her feel a little like she was being stalked. Doing her best to ignore the unwanted feeling, she turned back towards the others. Each of them had a slightly different look on their face, ranging from bewilderment to an almost devilish spark of understanding. Sorry about that, Echo shot them a weak smile. Sisters! But I... I don't understand, May stared at her. I thought Lex's Sweet Charm only had one daughter. I mean, of course I've heard of Echo Sweet Charm, the up-and-coming writer-director, but I thought she was... Uh, I mean, you were some distant cousin or something, and I certainly didn't know she... Uh, I mean, you were... 
she indicated towards the chair. That's because, despite how many people actually know the truth, I'm still one of the best kept secrets in the theatrical world. Becca couldn't help the bitter tone seeping into her voice. But why? May sounded genuinely hurt by the idea. I mean, I've seen one of the productions you've put on. It was amazing, and it was one of your original pieces, too. Why wouldn't your family want people to know about you? Because Alonzo's sweet child was a wretchedly horrible tyrant with an iron grip over the acting community. She half snarled out the words. I'd rather not continue this conversation any further. Oh. Sorry. May lowered her gaze, her whole being looking strangely deflated. No, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to snap. It's just, a lot of the sweet charm as an actor is someone I genuinely respect and admire. I mean, given his prolific career and his impeccable talent, who wouldn't admire him? But Alonzo Sweet Charm, the man, my grand patch, that man is a whole different story and one I've learned most people really don't want to know. It's okay, Echo. Everyone's families are complicated in some way, right? Zanny shot her a sympathetic smile. So why don't we just forget about this and order food already? Sounds like a good idea to me. Despite the casual tone of his voice, Jet's eyes almost burned into Echo as he spoke. Oh, me too! May grinned, suddenly getting her energy back. And drinks! First round on me! You don't have to, Echo started before May shot her a weirdly serious look. I said, first round on me, Echo. It's the least I can do for my new best friends. Enjoyed what you've heard so far? Please consider subscribing to find out when the next part's being released. Thanks for watching. See ya.